Well, this is the first snake on our list, and I never expected to have such a close encounter. Very important I don't breathe on it or it moves suddenly because this is a Western Brown. Real healthy looking one too. They're quite a volatile, dangerous snake. And in this confined area underneath a house, let alone in close proximity, he's best left alone. Sometimes the best thing to do with a deadly snake in the house is to starve it out. I'll have a look around and then I'll tell the family just how to do that. Here's the culprit. It's not that the Western Brown would hang around on the off chance of eating a pet bird, but the problem is the parrot is such a messy eater. The seed that the parrot kicks out of its cage attracts mice, and mice are what the snake's here for. Try a different kind of cage, and hey, no mice and no snakes. With me out of the way, the snake comes out to look for breakfast. Mice find their food by sniffing the air. Snakes use scent too, but they don't use their nostrils. They taste the air with their tongue to locate their prey. No feet means no footsteps. Mice can hear very well, but they still won't know about the snake until it's too late. The tongue flicks, tracking the mouse long distance, and the mouse is as good as dead already. What a little beauty. I'm going to expose this death adder. I'm in no danger at all. They're a very shy, timid, placid snake, and this is what causes them most of their problems, in that they won't retreat and run out of people's way. They'll sit, relying on their camouflage, thinking they're safe. People stand on them, whack, they bite low and hard. This looks dangerous, I know, but the secret is being as slow and smooth as the snake is. Now this is a potentially dangerous situation we've got here. Nothing worse than a death adder through your shoelace. Have a look at this little beauty. Aren't they glorious? This is the death adder. Very short, stout body. Quite a large, boofy head, triangular shaped head. Now, death adder by name, not by nature. As you can see, the death adder is very placid, very quiet and timid, and very uninclined to bite or strike. Just gotta keep my fingers out of the way. Now, the death adder's also got a very good set of fangs a lot larger than any of the others that we're going to take a look at. He settled down nicely, straight back under his leaf litter. It's important for me to remember that I'm a visitor in his territory and this is his environment, so I better get out of here because I've got a heck of a climb before sundown. Now this is a juvenile and he's still got these bands, very typical of the tiger snake, which you'll lose as he reaches adulthood. And you can see how nippy he is, <laughs> a little bit naughty. Whoa, now check this out. Here's the difference. This place crawls <laughs> with snakes. Have a look at this one. This is an adult. 
very large. Probably got a mutton bird in his belly there. And he's lo lost all those bands and he's solid black color. And he's a beauty. Now, unlike that smaller one, he'd have no natural predators. And he's very quiet. When I'm handling snakes, I try to be as gentle as possible. I don't grab them behind the head the way that everybody thinks you should. That can hurt the snake and it'll make it want to bite. Snakes have very delicate backbones, easily damaged. I always try to support the body with my hands and make sure a part of it's resting on the ground at all times. I'll just let him go back down this mutton hole. Then I'd better be off. No time to hang around on this trip. As a general rule, if you use good solid footsteps, snakes are quick to get out of your way. Now I've been very stealthy, very tender with my feet. And the reason being, there's a snake in here. They have no ears, they sense vibration. Footsteps pounding away, snake will scatter. So if I get over the top of this snake and shout at it, hey snake, it won't react, it can't hear me. Here he comes. Be careful. What I need to do is get him over here on the flat ground so as we can deal with him. He's starting to move away there. Right. Now, it's very important that I'm very gentle with him because you can see how flattened out he is. When they flatten out like that, that's like a cobra. And he's saying, look how big I am. I'm a venomous snake. Be careful. Try and get in and get his tail. Back here, mate. Hey. Keeps covering his tail up nicely. Very hard to get them when they're like that. Oh. You're a grumpy snake. He's a little bit cranky. Now, why... Wow, too close. That was too close. Nearly picked me up on the nose. Getting bitten on the face is really hard because you can't get a pressure bandage on it. This snake is particularly aggressive. The reason being is I've got him cornered. He feels confronted. He thinks I'm going to hurt him, perhaps even eat him. His only, his only form of defence is aggression, to retaliate. And it's very important that I get him by the tail, otherwise I'm not able to manipulate him. And what happens is every time I try get him by the tail, he swings at me. That's it. Right. I'm getting as tired of him as he is of me. I may have given this western tiger a bit of a fright, but he soon recovers and starts looking for frogs again. Nah, it's not a beaked, it's a near relative, a Stokes's sea snake. It's a real big one too, especially this close up. sea snake. Absolutely glorious. They've got some incredible body structure. You can see how their belly scales have come down and divided to make a keel to aid in swimming. Cute head. And they feel just like a snake, not slimy like an eel or a fish. And if we have a look down at the tail, you can see it's very flattened, almost paddle-like and this propels them through the water quite quickly and they can even go in reverse. You can see, like all sea snakes, they aren't aggressive, they breathe air just like we do. So bringing her to the surface is no harm. She's quite placid. And take a look at those nostrils. See how she opens and closes them? 
They're totally watertight. Let's just let her go and see what she does. Well, no big sea snake, but no worries. We saw plenty of others. Time to move on. Whoa, what a little ripper. Have a look at this one. Isn't she gorgeous? Now, I can tell this is a female, and she's in really good condition. Now, she's also gravid, which is a pregnant state in a snake. You can see she's got a lump that starts about here and goes all the way up her tummy. And she's gorgeous, very placid. Have a look on her body underneath the scales. Those little jiggers there, they're ticks. They're an external parasite and they feed on blood in the snake. A lot of Australian animals carry ticks and they don't present too much of a problem. She's so gorgeous and given that she's pregnant, I'll just let her go. When I leave to catch my boat, the snakes are left with just their everyday irritations. The ticks, for instance. Normally snakes just have to put up with these tiny bloodsuckers but several times a year, they offload them along with their own skin. First, they loosen the bit around the head. And the rest follows. One totally tick-free snake, for a while at least. Woo, taipan. Thing with the taipan is, they're one of the stealthiest snakes in the Australian bush and would be the most dangerous snake that I'm gonna be dealing with on this entire journey. Beautiful specimen, they've got a habit of coming straight back up over their own body and whistling past your ear. So let's have a look at him, and then I'll just release him on his way. Righto, mate. Good hunting. I work with snakes every day, but taipans really rattle me. This gaping mouth must look pretty intimidating to a rat, but that's not the point. The snake's just realigning its jaw. The rat's cover is soon blown wide open. Snakes have a unique way of eating. They've got no hands to shovel it in, and they don't chew their food, they swallow it whole, however large the meal is. They do this by unhinging their jaw from the rest of their skull. The prey is gulped down head first, then digestive juices finish what the venom started. And there's the little beauty. Snakes quite often find their way up into a car's engine box. Now comes the tough part of trying to get this highly venomous snake out of quite a tight area. The common brown likes places where people are common too. It gets into houses a lot. And when Australians are bitten, it's usually by this snake. I'm quite used to rescuing these snakes from frightened humans.
Wow, what an epic. Common brown in that kind of environment is certainly very dangerous. I've had to use a catch bag. I don't muck with him. It's tail into a catch bag, and now I'll get him back out into the bush where he can never run into a confrontation with people again. This is one of the greatest rewards for me, being able to release a potentially dangerous animal back out in the wilderness where he belongs. Have to be a little careful, because they normally come out of this bag very cranky. Each baby fierce snake already carries enough venom to kill several grown men. Certainly enough to knock us around. snake. It looks pretty drab, brown sort of a snake. They vary in colour. Some of them are quite strikingly beautiful. This is a big one, up around six foot two metres. And what it's doing is it's just searching, probing the rat holes. Underneath the soil is like a subterranean labyrinth. Now, fierce by name, certainly not by nature. As long as you give them plenty of distance, they aren't all that aggressive. Here she comes, she's coming back out. As long as I'm not threatening to her or create too much vibration, she's not bothered about me. Well, that hasn't happened to me before, or anybody else, anybody alive that is. Just think, the deadliest snake on earth came up and gave me a lick. Good thing she didn't like the taste much. We've just seen the ten most venomous snakes in Australia in the world. Yes! yes. was a wild adventure for me. I hope you've enjoyed it too. Snakes really are special and there's a lot more to learn about them yet, but we'll need a little less fear and a lot more respect.